Hello and welcome to My Bolt EUV. I am Jim and we're going from point A to point B. Climb in. Let's go. I recently had a commenter make a comment about my assertion that oil and coal and natural gas are all finite resources. And we're going to discuss that comment in detail. So, the title for today's episode is Oil and Coal Are Finite. Period. So, on one of my recent videos about the myths of EVs, I had a commenter who is obviously a shill for big oil make the statement that we have enough oil to last for a thousand years. Not only was his assertion ludicrous, but it was also laughable. I hope he's watching today. He needs a reality check. But as the title says, oil and coal are finite resources. But his comment got me to thinking. How many people actually believe the lies about what we call fossil fuels being infinite? How many believe that we will never run out? I'm going to say this one time, and I'm trying to say it as nice as I can. Ignorance is curable, but stupid is forever. If you want to know the facts, then continue with this video. But if you're so sure that oil and coal are going to be around forever and you believe the commenter, please stop the video now. As Ron White often said in his stand-up routines, you can't fix stupid. It's forever. But if you sincerely have asked the question, will we run out of oil or coal, you will get about a thousand different answers. There are varying degrees of fiction that permeate the oil and coal industry, like the fiction that the commenter posted in my comments. But here are a few facts that are absolutely undeniable. Crude oil is limited. The shale oil and gas that is available in quantities will take us further into the future than the current sources of crude oil, but they're wholly unreachable with the technology we currently use, and the new technologies will likely bankrupt humanity. To reach those resources, you would have to dig hundreds of miles into the Earth's surface to reach them. And this is not something that is within our current state of technology, and quite frankly, it's not logical, scientifically feasible, or safe to do that. There is crude oil that we can reach with drilling as well as natural gas. But to frack these resources from shale is dangerous and disastrous. Just ask the people living in Pennsylvania and Oklahoma if they like the tremblers or the natural gas coming out of their water spigots. Which leads back to the very first assertion that I made. Both the crude oil and natural gas that are available today are finite. Period. Ask any scientist who is well versed in this subject and the consensus is that we have about 50 years of crude oil, about 55 years of natural gas, and about 115 years worth of coal left. That's it. That's all. Period. However, if you mix in the fairy dust and the outright lies of the exploiters on the internet, you can frack from the shale and get another 250 years worth of oil and gas, which is bogus. Let's take a look at a few of the crude oil facts. The worldwide crude oil reserves are between 1.6 trillion and 1.7 trillion barrels. We consume 97 plus million barrels per day, and the yearly consumption is 35.4 billion barrels of oil. Doesn't sound too finite to me. How about you? Now what does this mean in terms of carbon dioxide? How much carbon dioxide is put into the atmosphere each year by each barrel of crude oil? Well, I'm going to provide a link to one of the key resources here and that's how you compute carbon dioxide coming from a gallon of gas. There are 20 pounds of CO2 in each gallon of gas, but you might think how can you get 20 pounds of CO2 from a gallon of gas that only weighs 6.3 pounds? You have to go back to basic chemistry to understand. Yes, there's only 5.5 pounds of carbon in a gallon of gas out of the 6.3 pounds. But the carbon molecule takes an O2 molecule during the process of burning. The atomic weight of both chemicals that make up the CO2 molecule must be considered, not just the carbon itself. So 5.5 pounds times 3.7 
equals about 20.35 pounds, period. So 20 pounds of carbon dioxide come out of a single gallon of gas. I want to take a deep dive into this for everyone so there's not any confusion about this whatsoever. In one barrel of oil, there are 20 gallons of gasoline and 12 gallons of diesel. Each gallon of gasoline produces 20.35 pounds of CO2, while each gallon of diesel pr produces 22.44 pounds of CO2. We use about 97 million barrels of oil per day. So at the end of the day, we are pumping 32,834,994 tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. That's daily, not yearly, daily. Now let's take a look at the actual observations from the Mauna Loa Observatory for the past 65 years. Again, these are real numbers and I will provide a link to the page in the description. From 1958 to 1988, there was an increase of 35 parts per million in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But from 1988 to 2018, that increase was 65 parts per million. So even the non-scientists can see there has been an acceleration in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over the past 30 years. I will not discuss how this affects temperature because that really is not important. It would take a lot more than 2,500 parts per million for the, this to become a big concern. But the health consequences at 1,000 parts per million becomes our biggest problem. At 1,000 parts per million, the average person will start getting drowsy. And at 2,000 parts per million, life itself becomes dangerous. So we need to put on the brakes on this trend, and that means now. Again, I'm going to provide the link to the observations from 1958 until today. Back to the assertion that we have an infinite amount of oil and gas. What fantasy world do you actually live in to believe that nonsense? Even the most conservative of scientists will tell you that we will completely run out of crude oil in our reserves within the next five decades. And waiting until that happens to do anything about it is like waiting till your ch ship only has the mast sticking out of the water before you try to stop it from sinking. The bottom line is that we have about 1.6 to 1.7 trillion barrels of oil that we can safely and intelligently access. And we're using more than 97 million barrels of oil per day. And we have less than 50 years of those resources left on the earth. Sure, we can frack some for additional years out of the shale that's around the world, but even that's going to run out. And I will say it again over and over, and I'm right about my assessment. The non-renewable resources that we have on hand are finite, period. They are not infinite, period. And either anyone who tells you differently is either stupid or they're a bald-faced liar. Either way, their assertions are dangerous and should not be taken seriously. It is time to sound the alarm, and it is past time to act. It is beyond stupid to sit idly by and do nothing. The battery electric vehicle is the best option we have in the reduction of the consumption of gasoline and diesel. Renewable energies like wind, solar, and hydroelectric make the implementation of battery electric vehicles better. Mining a mineral like lithium one time is smarter than sucking oil out of the ground and burning it until it's gone. Nuclear fuels will power the world fully for the next 10,000 years if we let them. And the danger of dying from a nuclear accident is a hundred, hundred fold less likely than dying from the chemicals that we're spewing into the atmosphere with these carbon-based fuels. More than a thousand people per year die directly from these poisons. Fewer than 25 have died directly from every nuclear accident we've had in the past 50 years. That's Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and Fukushima all combined. I want to throw this in here for you as well. Every time you hear something negative about EV ownership, I can guarantee that you can trace that misinformation back to big oil. 100% guaranteed. Big oil is about the business of big oil, and they don't care about EVs. The reason they don't, they will lose business with the battery electric vehicle. So remember, every time you hear someone speaking negatively about battery electric vehicles and how they're bad for the world, trace the money back to big oil. 
That's where it's coming from, and that's a guarantee. So in conclusion, I want to make it clear, unless you have scientifically factual evidence with supporting documentation to cast doubt on what I've said here today, I would suggest you need not waste my time with your snide and deliberately antagonistic comments. I'm open for debate. What I'm not open to is living in a fantasy world where wishful thinking is equivocated with scientific fact and reality. And if you really care about the future and you want to do something about that, then review the information presented here. And do consider buying a battery electric vehicle the next time you need a car. It is better than pumping 20.35 pounds of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere with every gallon of gas you burn. And remember, based on where you live and the amount of electricity you use, the average battery electric vehicle becomes carbon neutral at 25,000 miles or less. So, please do remember to subscribe, share, comment, and like, and ring the notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload something new. Thank you so much for stopping by today, and remember, treat everyone with kindness, put a smile on your face, help someone today, and pay it forward when someone does the same for you. I will see you all again real soon, or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. Take it easy, everybody. Thank you.